It's the Political Brown Kid here, and I am back again with another Hollywood in black and white. Um, as you all know, due to the writers and actor strikes, um, I don't know if there's been a slowdown in content, or maybe I just haven't really been um, paying attention to a lot of television and stuff like that. But this time, I'm going to take a look at a new show that came out on Netflix. And I told you all about Netflix. Netflix, I've been meaning to get around to just doing an all-encompassing Hollywood in black and white, just focusing on the many, many egregious things that Netflix does when it comes to black people. Um, it's a whole lot. I mean, you can even look at stuff like Bridgerton, um, what uh, always a witch, but I'm going to go in, in um, the outer bank show. I'm going to dive into all of that. Um, got a whole lot of bed winching, a whole lot of Blanca Miento going on and all that. But this time I'm going to take a look at the new popular movie that just came out. It's called leave the world behind. Um, that movie stars Julia Roberts, Mahershala Ali, and also Ethan Hawke. And it has, a, I think, a young lady named Mahaya Ali. Um, that's the black female. Um, she plays Mahershala Ali's daughter. Um, so those individuals, well, Mahaya La, I forget her, how to say her name. But you all can look her up in IMDb. But this movie is called Leave the World Behind, and it's a Netflix original. And it's and once again, this should be relatively short because th these movies all fit the same pattern when it comes to Hollywood. And once again, like I try to tell y'all, these aren't just movies. You can't just look at it. Movies are something that is premeditated. You write the script a particular way. So somebody had to write the dialogue down. So the dialogue is pre-thought out, right? The dialogue is premeditated. And then also the casting is premeditated. I want you, you're a perfect fit for this role. You're a perfect fit for that role. And the directing, all of that is premeditated to steer you to a particular point. And once again, um, leave the world behind. It goes, it falls right into long lines what all white people do in Hollywood. And that is, when you look at the white family, basically this movie, just to kind of give you a high level summary without giving the movie away. So let me start there first. This movie, Leave the World Behind, Netflix original. It's about, um, it's this family, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke's family. They rent out this house in this beach town. So they rent out a house in a beach town. And so this house is obvious. It's kind of like in a semi secluded area. And while they're staying there, um, you know, communications, when I say communications, I'm talking like your technological devices, like the internet and um, like phones and communication just kind of go down and they can't contact anyone. So who shows up at the house and a little bit later on is going to be Mahershala Ali and his young daughter. So if anyone doesn't know, Mahershala Ali is a black male and his daughter is played by a black female. Of course, they had to cast a black female that could pass the brown paper bag test and the comb test. That's going to be important when I'm going to start talking about this because none of this stuff, like I told y'all, all of this is premeditated. So they show up at the house basically saying that there's something going on. They couldn't get back to the city, so they had to divert to this house, which is the house that they owned, that they rented out to Julia Roberts and her family. And they would want they wanted to know if they could just shack up in the house together while they figure out what's going on. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but when you look at this movie, when you start right off the bat, once again, what they like to do in these movies is they like to show you a nuclear family when it comes to white people. They will show you a nuclear family. They will show you a white male, a white husband, a white wife, and they have children. So they'll show you the complete family. And they, that, that's what they have. They have a, this Ethan Hawke, Julia Roberts, and their two children, one boy, one girl. When Mahershala Ali shows up, black male, he shows up with his black daughter. She's around, I guess, 20, I guess, maybe 20-ish. Now, of course, his wife is nowhere to be found. They ask her later, him later on, well, where's your wife? Oh, she's on travel. She's overseas. And I forget where she was, but she was on international travel. But they'll never show you that black nuclear family. It's either the, the, 
the black man or the black woman is just missing and it's just a breakdown in family relations or they just write this stuff out like, oh, she's around, but you just don't see her, which you have in this case in this movie. So he's so you're not going to see a black nuclear family. He shows up with his daughter. So this family's already broken. That's the image that you're getting in your head. OK. The other part about this movie in, um, is. You start to see the sexualization of the black woman to white men. I don't make this up. I already knew when I saw him show up at the door and I saw this black girl who was attractive, who could pass the brown paper bag test and the comb test. And for all you white people who don't know what that means, go look it up. Brown paper bag test, comb test. That's the test they used to give us back in the what the 50s before you could get into any HBCU. That's why all the old HBCU pictures, all you see is nothing but light-skinned brothers and sisters running around. And that's why Martin Luther King grabbed him up, Coretta. Because she could pass that brown paper bag and that comb test, I guess. In any event. <clears throat> and that's what black men do, right? Black men snatch up black women that can pass the brown paper bag and the comb test. When you look at affluent black men in Hollywood, they that's what they do. I'm not making this stuff up. Colorism is real. So when this when they show up, again, I'm getting to the second point. When you look at this daughter, she's relatively attractive. She's thin. That's also the case, too, because when they pair black men up with black women, you know, normally it's a hood movie and she's chunky and there's all kind of other stuff. But when they about to pair a, white, a black woman up with a white man, you can best believe she's going to be fit in shape. So you have this young girl shows up in shape, kind of, you know, a little caramel complexion. Like I say, hey, um, you know, fine, finer hair. So she, the, the first time you see that they're going to sexualize her in this movie is when she goes out to the pool. She goes and changes into a bathing suit. So the young son, Ethan Hawke and Julia Roberts' son, is swimming in the swimming pool with his little sister. And as he's swimming, he stops dead in his tracks. Almost, man, this man could have almost drowned in that water. Stops dead in his tracks and looks. And he's like, oh, my God. And, of course, they show her walking in this two-piece. They had to get a, a bottom shot of that, you know, of her front, of her frontal area. And so, you know, he's in awe. Oh, so then he starts sitting there and then he starts snapping pictures of her. And so then later on, while everybody's off in their own individual rooms, he's in the bedroom looking at the pictures that he snapped. And he got one of her on her laying on her side. He got a little, you know, he got a derriere pick. So he's looking at that. And then they show him doing something in the bed, you know, basically having fun time alone, solo fun time with himself with her pictures so once again the sexualization of the black male with a black woman they always create these sexual environments when they put a black woman and a black man together a black woman and a white man together then later on they show another scene where she is with ethan hall julia H julia roberts husband now, this man is twice her age he's old enough to be her father so she's sitting outside with him and the dialogue, and I'm paraphrasing is, she's like, yeah, you know, I bet you, you you have a lot of things. You seem like the person that things in life comes easy to them. You know, things just come easy to them because you're easy on the eyes. And so she says, and, you know, I bet women come easy to you too. And he's just like, what? You think so? Because then she asked him, has he ever had an affair with any of his students? And he was like, no. And so, but she goes there. So once again, she's there. They, once again, they like to show you a, a young black woman flirting with the black, flirting with the white man. And then she goes into the basement because that's where her and Mahershala, her and her father, they were standing in the basement. So as she's laying in the basement with her father, now this is the thing I didn't get. Now this goes to show you that whoever wrote this movie, the writers for this movie just weren't black people. They were white writers because black people don't say this type of stuff to their parents. So her and her father are laying in the same bed, you know, because there's only one bed in the basement. And she's just kind of like, yeah, dad, you know how you know white people can be. Of course, they always got to show us trying to be rebel. They always make the black woman seem like she's a rebel and she's, 
she's down for the cause, but she's always into white men, right? That's the, that's what they do. She's a black woman down for the cause, but love white men. So she's laying in the bed like, Dad, you know you can't trust white people. And she's like, and I think that um, I think that the father wants to f me. And he's like, what? What would make you say that? What black female do you know? What black kid, period, do you know would say something like that to their parents? Why you laying in the same bed with your parents? He got his shirt off, she in her pajamas, and you, they laying side by side. And you going to tell your father, so-and-so wants to F me. What black person do you know would say something like that? I'm just curious. But anyway, I digress. But then they also show later on, they show Mahershala Ali flirting with Julia Roberts. Because while his daughter's outside with Ethan Hawke having their little talk, he's in the room dancing with Julia Roberts. And they kind of get a little cozy and they kind of show that they're kind of like there's some chemistry going on with them too. Once again, and I'm basically saying all that to say this. They love it. And this is a thing with Netflix. And I told y'all, I'm going to get into the whole Netflix. You can start looking at their whole catalog. They love to interracialize everything. They're not going to show you a black love movie. I, once again, I'll tell you all this. When you watch white movies, they will show you white love. Even in that movie, It, with the clown, the movie It, I-T, they had that young boy. All of them boys were in love with that one white girl. All of them young white boys. Well, I shouldn't say all of them, but it was two of them. Two of them was definitely feeling her. One of them was writing poetry to her. Your hair is winter fire. My heart burns there, too. He was writing her great poetry. And they can create, white people will create love stories with even their young kids. Like, if you ever watch the movie It's a Wonderful Life, um, which is a great movie, by the way, too. Um, it's an old Christmas movie. It's Christmas time now, so you guys ought to watch it. They show the little white girls, they go to the little ice cream parlor, I guess they called them the malt shops back then, and they all done up wearing their Sunday dresses, and she's just like, and the one little white girl, these girls look like they're they about eight years old, and they're like, man, and the one girl says to the other girl, you just boy crazy, and she says, so what's wrong with that? And then the one boy, because he's kind of deaf in one ear, she leans over to his deaf ear because she knows that he can't hear. And she says, Georgie, I just love you to death, Georgie. And they'll show, and this is what white people do. They will show love interactions between young white people, young together, young white men, young white, white women. They'll show love and infatuation and desire between those two. You watch black movies, all it is is a daggone B, come here. B, it's just a bunch of aggression. It's a bunch of just, you know, it's there's no real good chemistry. And not to, we do have some, but I'm just talking about the overwhelming majority of stuff that we're either going to write. It's going to be some hood stuff. And then the movies that white people put us in, they're never going to pair a black woman up with a black man. If they do, she's going to be a heavy set, chunky black woman. He probably going to be a heavy set, chunky black man. They're not going to show you two virile, young, attractive black people creating chemistry with one another. They're going to pair the black woman up with the white man. And either if the black man gets paired up with anybody, it's probably going to be another man because they're going to show him as being, you know, gay. They're going to show him as being gay or he's just going to be the, the, um, the, what is it? The androgynous comic relief of the movie, or they'll just pair him with a white woman. They never put us together. And so that's the problem that I continually have with these movies. They don't show y'all young love. And if you look at the way this internet is going with black women hating black men, black men, you know, not being able to get along with black women. And you just hear all this antagonism about black women talking about they leaving us and we dusty and you have these Cynthia G's running around. If any race needs to see positive interactions, positive love stories, it is black people. And that's why I'm making these videos. So once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. If you've seen the movie Leave the World Behind on Netflix with Julia Roberts, Mahershala Ali, and Ethan Hawke, definitely leave a comment. If not, go check it out. See for yourself. Matter of fact, go watch all of my other Hollywoods in black and white. Go watch my original content that I dropped when I when I didn't have any subscribers. I barely have subscribers now. 
but go back and watch, listen to my videos and see if what I'm not saying doesn't make sense in the real world. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. I'm out of here.